Hi, I'm Sandy, and I'm in the kitchen with Pampered Chef. Everybody loves comfort foods. They make us feel as cozy as putting on our favorite pair of sweatpants. I'm going to show you how to satisfy your comfort food cravings by making over and making better a few of your favorite fall dishes. Foods like casseroles, burgers, and pizzas are so good, but they don't always offer very much in the way of nutrition benefits. Comfort foods don't all need to be just rich and decadent and void of any nutrients. With some easy tweaks, I'm gonna show you three comfort food recipes with some nutrition benefits. I'm gonna show you burgers, mac and cheese, and some mashed potatoes. Okay guys, so I have a confession to make. I have always loved a juicy hamburger. But when I started cutting back on meat, I wanted a way to still enjoy burgers, but without all the beef. So now I'm gonna show you how to make a blended burger with some beef and some mushrooms. It is so delicious. So let me show you right here, I have two packages of cremini mushrooms. Cremini mushrooms are also called baby bellas and they really have great flavor. So I'm gonna start by chopping them really finely, actually so finely that they're gonna resemble ground beef. I rinse these off pretty good. I'm just gonna add them in batches to my MFP and get them all chopped up. It's the fastest way. So here. Looking good. Then I'm gonna put them right here in my micro cooker because I'm gonna cook them in the microwave for just a couple minutes. You could do it on the stove top too, but I find the microwave is so easy. It just takes a couple minutes. And cooking them is gonna really intensify their flavor. Mushrooms have a lot of liquid in them. You'll notice when you cook them out on the stove top, they release a lot of liquid. And when you release the liquid, that's what helps intensify the flavor of the mushrooms. All that umami goodness that they bring. And I have to say, for people who aren't mushroom people, and they try some of my, mu my mushroom recipes where I grind it up like uh, my mushroom rigatoni bolognese, they don't even notice that it's mushrooms in there because it just kind of takes on that meaty flavor that you're trying to achieve. Looking good. I also love mushrooms because they're rich in B vitamins and also in an antioxidant called selenium that promotes a healthy immune system. Good. So when I make over recipes, I usually ask myself two questions. Number one, what can I substitute in this recipe to make it better for me and taste good? And what can I add to this recipe to make it better for me and taste good or taste even better than the original? And I don't like to change too much. I like to keep some of the identity. So you'll see for these burgers, it's not all veggies. It's part beef, part veggies, so you get the best of both worlds. Okay, that's a lot of mushrooms in there. Looking great. They're going to cook down a lot. Again, when they release that moisture, they're going to shrink. Just going to pop this in the microwave for about three to five minutes. Okay, so I have my cooked mushrooms, cooked chopped mushrooms, and I just drained them really, really well here to get all that liquid out. I'm going to add them to eight ounces of lean ground beef. Okay, so then we just have one egg. And we have a half a cup of panko. You can do seasoned panko or plain panko. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit of salt and pepper. This recipe is great because it's only four ingredients. I love simple recipes like that that just taste great. Okay, mash this all together. You know, this recipe is a great way to actually stretch your beef. In other words, Meat can be expensive, especially ground beef, but you're using less of the ground beef. I only used half of it. Um, by adding the mushroom, you can stretch it and make it last longer and then use your other half for another recipe. I'm just gonna preheat my double burner grill. You can add different rubs and seasonings to your burgers too, but I like them super simple. All, you're gonna be really shocked at all the flavors that the mushrooms provide. So I've got my burger and slider press. I'm gonna use the slider insert, because um, sliders are so easy to make and they're actually a lot easier to cook because they're a lot smaller, so they cook up a lot quicker. So I'm gonna start by just sprinkling a little bit of panko at the bottom and it helps the meat from sticking. Then just scoop about a quarter of a cup of the mixture in there. Press it down. And then I like to form all my burgers first and put them here on this flexible cutting mat before I cook them. 
I love this burger press because it helps make sure that your burgers are all evenly shaped. So then they cook easier, cook faster. They're all consistent. So now we're ready to transfer these guys over to a double burner grill. It's so great, these can all fit in here. I'm gonna cook them about three to five minutes aside. You wanna make sure to cook these long enough because they firm up. They're a little delicate until they start to um, cook a little bit. So you could tell if you like take a peek, you could feel that they're a little bit firmer when they're ready to flip. All right, just a couple more minutes. I'm a ketchup girl myself. Barbecue would be great on this too. How good is that? I'm not sure anything says comfort food like creamy, dreamy mashed potatoes. I usually make them every year for Thanksgiving and I make them in the slow cooker. But this year, I'm gonna make this mashed potato cauliflower mixture on my family. And it's so great because it's in the microwave. So what I already did is I took three russet potatoes that were peeled and I microwaved them with a little bit of veggie broth for about 11 minutes. So these are pretty soft. And then I'm gonna take two cups of cauliflower florets and go ahead and add it to the um, rock crock and then I'm gonna microwave it for about seven to nine minutes. So you can leave your skins on your potatoes if you like. I actually really like it because that's where all the fiber is at. Makes it look super rustic too. All right, in the microwave we go. Okay, so my potatoes and cauliflower are all done cooking. Nice and hot. Now we're gonna go ahead and add in some Greek yogurt. I have about a half a cup here. So Greek yogurt is gonna take the place in this recipe of sour cream or heavy cream, whatever you use in your mashed potatoes. And then we have about two to three tablespoons of butter. So yes, mashed potatoes do need butter. I'm not taking it all out. I'm just using a little bit less than you probably would because that Greek yogurt helps with the creaminess too. And then I'm gonna add some salt and pepper. Potatoes need a lot of salt. This is gonna be just a really basic plain mashed potato. You could dress this up with garlic or maybe some rosemary. And I'm gonna do it nice and simple. Some black pepper. And we're gonna go ahead and mash it up. There we go. Cool. I'm gonna to top with a little chives. You could even add more Greek yogurt or maybe a little cheese on the top. Whew. Looks great. Last but not least, I know everybody has a place in their heart for mac and cheese. I know it's so easy to just grab a box and make it for your kids or your family, but I'm gonna show you a way that is so much better and just as fast. Okay, so the star of the show is gonna be canned pumpkin. I am so excited to show you all this. I'm gonna add one full can of canned pumpkin to a sauce pot. So you wanna make sure when you're buying your pumpkin that you're getting 100% pumpkin, not pumpkin pie mix, okay? So a good way to know that you're getting the right pumpkin is if you just go ahead and look at the ingredients, it should just say pumpkin. And by the way, canned pumpkin is just as healthy for you as fresh pumpkin. I just love that it's just as healthy. It has all the nutrients that fresh pumpkin has too. Okay, so then I'm gonna go ahead and add a cup of milk any milk of your choice, by the way. I'm just using regular milk, but you could add almond milk, soy milk, whatever's right for you. So add that. And then we're gonna add two garlic cloves. These are big garlic cloves, because I like it garlicky. I love that the pumpkin gives it all that orange color that you'd expect from mac and cheese. And I add a little bit of salt. So I'm adding about a half teaspoon of salt, but you really wanna make sure to salt it to your taste. Go ahead and get that. We're gonna get that just about up to a simmer before we add our cheese. So what beta carotene does is it converts to vitamin A in your body, and it's really, really great for your immune system. You probably know like carrots are good for your eyes. Now we're gonna add about two tablespoons of butter. Cause again, you gotta have a little bit of butter in your mac and cheese. It gives it that creamy, delicious mouthfeel. We're gonna wait until this butter melts, just a little bit more, and then we'll start adding our cheese. 
If you add the cheese a little bit at a time, it's gonna help it melt a little bit better. I love buying a fresh block of cheese because it melts so much better than the pre-grated cheese. So make sure, especially in this recipe, that you buy a fresh block. Now this is sharp cheddar cheese. I like how it gives a real kick of flavor instead of um, a milder cheese, but you can do what you like. This recipe is also really good the next day. I made it at home and it was great, but the next day it got even thicker and the flavors really were a little bit stronger the next day. And this is great because it makes about three cups of sauce. That's a lot. Okay, we're almost there. So I made some elbow mac. By the way, this sauce would be good not just on mac and cheese. You could put it on vegetables. You could do nachos or something. Whatever else you would use cheese sauce. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the heat because this is really hot. <sighs> Wish you guys could smell this. So great. So creamy. I also love that I just opened a can of pumpkin and put it in there. Now you could go ahead and make fresh puree, either with sweet potato or with fresh pumpkin, but this is such a great shortcut. I'm just gonna bring my pasta in. Okay. Oh yes. So great. No fluorescent cheese powder all over the counter. Delish. So the next time you're craving some of your favorite comfort foods, follow some of my makeover tips. Remember, it's not just about what you're substituting in your recipe, it's about what you're adding to them to make them better and better for you. Comment below and let us know some of your favorite makeover tips. See you next time.